Yo, what's up everybody, it's boy Jet here, and welcome back to a brand new video, and Sonic has had his fair share of games on Nintendo consoles, such as Sonic Rush on the DS, Sonic Advance on the GBA, Sonic Heroes on the GameCube, Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric on the Wii U, or Sonic in the Dark Knight on the Wii. However, in 2010, the Wii got a brand new Sonic game, Sonic Colors, and that's the game we're going to be talking about today. Let's talk about it, shall we? Sonic Colors was released in 2010 for the Nintendo Wii, and sees Sonic and Tails going to Eggman's interstellar amusement park with the belief that Eggman has an evil plan. And while at first Tails doesn't think they, they do, Sonic is confident there is. Eventually the two spot Orbot and newcomer Cubot chasing after these aliens which Sonic rescues before being fused into one of them, before ending up back with Tails, who's working on a translator to allow them to communicate with the aliens and the other aliens Sonic can rescue. Sonic decides they need to figure out how capturing the aliens fixed into Eggman's plan, and Sonic eventually finds Eggman. However, Eggman soon flees after having Cubot send a giant robot known as the Globotron to fight Sonic. Sonic destroys it and returns back to Tails, who's working on his translator, and he got it working enough to where they can speak to the alien and find out his name is Yakker, that he's from a race of aliens called Wisps, and that they're being kidnapped for their powers by an evil man. And while the translator clearly still needs work, Sonic decides to go and save the Wisps. Meanwhile, Orbot and Cubot are cleaning up the destroyed remains of Globotron, though they find they're missing an arm. The missing arm has somehow lost itself into the energy cannon that Eggman has. Eventually, Tails catches up with Sonic and learns that Eggman, who the wrist referred to as Baldu Nose Hair, is capturing them for the hyper going power, and after learning this, Sonic goes up to find Baldu Nose Hair. Eventually, while searching for him, Tails gets mind controlled by Eggman. However, before Eggman can make Sonic and Tails fight, the mind control beams runs out of energy and Eggman flees. Eventually, they learn that Eggman is using five generators to hold the planets into place, and Sonic plans to destroy the remaining three. Eventually, he finds one and Planet Wisp, and you get one of the worst cutscenes in the entire game. It's subsidiary. All unauthorized photography, video reproduction, or shutting down of generators is strictly prohibited. Thank you! Eggman! I am going to save this planet, and I am going to free these aliens! No copyright law in the universe is going to stop me! After defeating the robot, Tails catches Sonic talking to the broken robot before they eventually end up in Asteroid Coaster and see the, the facility egg where Eggman is turning the whips into the Nega Whips. Tails is afraid as he hasn't seen Yakker in a while and Sonic goes off to stop the generator, causing the tractor beams to disappear and so the two head back to Tropical Resort and run into all the whips who seem to be partying but they were all freed. Eggman fires the mind control beam however it explodes and malfunctions as a result of Globotron's arm being stuck in it which causes the entire place to start crumbling and exploding. Sonic and Tails run to the elevator to escape where Eggman catches them so Sonic pushes Tails into the elevator and goes to fight Eggman. Not to fight again, an artificial black hole begins sucking up everything so Sonic runs away but it eventually catches him but the whips save him before saying goodbye and leaving forever. FOREVER! And credits roll, thus Ending the game. I'm gonna be honest, the writing for this game is really fucking bad. <laughs> For one, Sonic's so stuck on the fact that Eggman managed to capture a whole planet like he didn't see Eggman do that before in CD. Why are you so shocked by this? Oh, I know why. Because Pontac and Graf never played a fucking Sonic game before. Moreover, the jokes in this game stink. Like this. Yeah, I'll just stick with aliens if that's okay with everybody. This. Hey, Tails. You missed the BBBE. Huh? Best boss beating ever. This. You know, I don't like what you're doing to my friends in there. It's messed up. So I'm gonna mess you up. Yeah. That's right. I'm stretching. You got a problem with that? I want to be able to fully enjoy taking you apart without some pulled muscle slowing me down. Okay, now I'm ready. Of course, if you want to run away, please feel free. There's no shame in it. Well, maybe a little shame. You guys don't talk much, do you? Fair enough. Don't say I didn't warn you. Oh, and especially this. Who they call Baldy Nose Hair. <laughs> Baldy Nose Hair? That's the best thing I've heard all day. I gotta remember that one. <laughs> I know, I've already written it down. 
anyway. He's draining them of their power, all their power, and using it for an evil aquatic mammal, an evil dolphin. No, a porpoise. Oh, an evil purpose. That's good intel. Keep working on it. Hey, where are you going? To find Baldy McNose Hair, of course. <laughs> I'm totally calling him McNose Hair. The game tries to be all goofy and lighthearted and haha funny, but for me, none of the jokes land. Moreover, the voice acting in this game isn't great either. This is the first time in a main game we get to hear Roger Craig Smith's Sonic voice, and it's not great. Sounds awkward and a bit like he's trying too hard, but I mostly blame the voice direction because I really like the way Roger does Sonic's voice in the Boom TV show. Frontiers is fine and Forces is alright, so it's not exactly his fault. Cubot's voice gimmicky is also annoying. Like his voice chip is messed up the entire game until the very end and it's just annoying. Though the second time you get do get this fun little bit from Orbot. The thick bones connected to the Talk bone, the top bone's connected to the mouth bone. There, good as new. Robot singing them bones while fixing Cubot is unironically probably the funniest bit in this entire game. And that's fucking sad because even it's not that funny. The writing of this game is just so bad, but it's probably the last thing this game has to worry about because gameplay wise, it also isn't great. The game features six areas that you go through, those being Tropical Resort, Sweet Mountain, Starlight Carnival, Planet Whip, Aquarium Park, and Asteroid Coaster. And the areas are split into six short levels and a boss fight, and these suck for various reasons. The boss fights are not only reused after style like Carnival as Planet Wisp, Aquarium Park, and Asteroid Coaster all just reused their bosses from Tropical Resort, Sweet Mountain, and Starlight like Carnival respectively, but they are also piss easy and just get melted by the wisps. It's fucking insanity. Moreover, these levels after a while just feel like rehashes. It doesn't feel like I'm running through different parts of one area. It feels like I'm running back through the exact same area. And the game kinda does this multiple times. Oh, and something I just feel like pointing out is that despite being marketed and held as a 3D Sonic game, this is a 2D game. Don't believe me? Tropical Resort X2, 4, and 6 are all fully 2D. Sweet Mountain X4 and 6 are full 2D. X2, 3, 4, and 6 are full 2D for Starlight Carnival. Every act of Planet Wisp Effect Act 1 is full 2D. For Aquarium Park, X2, 3, and 5 are full 2D, and X3 and 5 of Asteroid Coaster are fully 2D. That's 19 levels that are fully 2D, and a 3D game that only has 36 levels, not counting bosses. That's 52 to 53% of the levels in this game. For a 3D game, having over half your game be in 2D, while not a good look, on its own is not an issue. Because if you know anything about game design, 2D and 3D are basically the same thing. However, to me, it becomes an issue when these levels aren't fun because they have you either sitting around hitting switches and waiting for the entire level or the spring levels, which are outright atrocious because they're slow, boring, tedious, and annoying as you are effectively confined to this slow moving spring. All of those 2D levels would be fine if they were fun, but they aren't fun to me. And that's where the issue is. Not the fact that they're 2D, the fact that they're boring. And with them making up just over half of the game, that entire half of the game is boring to play through. To make things worse, the underwater levels in a crane park feel kind of awkward to control just because of how funky and awkward the underwater controls in this game are. Like, to be fair though, Sonic and underwater controls have never been the best of friends, but at least in those games, Sonic feels good to control underwater. This game genuinely does not feel good to control underwater. The infinite underwater jump is weird as well, but it is also kind of cool being able to jump as long as you want. However, to be fair, Sonic does also kind of feel a bit awkward to control above water too. His jump is super floaty and he loses a bit of momentum whenever he jumps. He feels kind of slippery and floaty in general really. The game's drift fucking blows. Never been a big fan of it, still not. I much prefer the drift he has in Generations or the version of this very same drift he had in World Adventure because it just feels better to control there, even if it's still only too bright. The Wisps are the new gameplay mechanic for this game, and to be honest, they're alright. The in this game are the Laser, Drill, Hover, Rocket, Cube, Spike, and Frenzy Wisps. The Laser Wisp lets you travel through the levels faster and bounce off of uh, solid objects. 
Drill lets you well, drill underground and speed through the water. Rocket shoots you directly upward. Hover lets you hover through the levels and can even be used to light speed dash. The spike whips lets you spick, stick to walls and rolls through obstacles. Frenzy just eats up obstacles and gets larger the more it consumes and is probably my favorite one. And cube stops you and destroys obstacles near it and even changes the blue cubes to blue rings and vice versa. And frankly, these aren't great, especially in regards to cube because it stops you dead in your tracks, completely bringing the game to a halt. Like, they wanted the Wisps to be like a power-up that didn't stop the game, but when one of your Wisps actively stops the fucking game? Wh where were you going with that? Frenzy, despite being the best, is somewhat annoying to control as it just sort of flops around on its own and gets harder to control the bigger it gets. It also makes the game have damn near a fucking conniption, but we're not gonna talk about that. Trying to turn around with the spike whips is a little annoying because you have zero indication or idea of where you're facing, other than just using the spin dash and charging it because the trail will be behind you. Meanwhile, the rest just sort of feel like they're there. They don't feel like proper gameplay mechanics and abilities, they instead feel like power ups. And while I get that's what they were going for, I would have preferred if they were incorporated into the levels and gameplay better. There's also the white wisps, wisps which allow you to boost in this game, and they're alright. Though despite all my complaining, the gameplay isn't all bad. As the final area, terminal, terminal velocity is really fucking good. It only has three levels, the first being a short mission where you need to avoid the lasers from the robots, then avoid the big chase's attacks, and then the level ends. After that though is the final boss, and it's so fucking good. The boss fight feels good to play, is a fun challenge, makes use of the cube, spike, and laser whips namely. This is a damn good boss fight. It's so good. Argu I'd argue it's the best part of this game. So much so that they reused it again and again. And the music for this boss fight is fucking amazing. Just listen. music the music for this game is very hit or miss if you've noticed i often use the music for this game in the background of my videos though it's always the same few songs and those are the best ones but most of the music in the game is pretty solid take a listen
in this game is far and above easily the best part of the game, but other than that, the game isn't great. Super Sonic is also unlockable in this game, as isn't unlockable by playing Eggman Sonic Simulator, and you play through the different levels, you get more levels by getting more red rings, and if you beat all the levels, you get a Chaos Emerald, and when you get all seven, then you can play as Super Sonic in the various levels. If you do, you can boost indefinitely and are invincible, though you can't use Wisps. You can also play the Sonic Simulator levels multiplayer, and it's super fun to do so. That's all there is to really say about the Wii version. Like, frankly, this version kind of blows. The, it has horrid writing, boring gameplay, slow levels, somewhat awkward controls, and it's frankly carried by the music and final boss. But even those aren't perfect. And it's frankly, because it's not all that. But there is also the DS release of the game. And the DS version of Sonic Colors is very different from the Wii one. Story-wise, the game is basically the exact same, with the only change being a secret boss against the Mother Wisp, where Sonic and Tails learned that the Mother Wisp was infected by all the Nega Wisp energy and turned into the Nega Mother Wisp. And so Sonic turns into Super Sonic to fight her, and upon her defeat, the Mother Wisp returns to normal, and the Wisp part ways with Sonic and Tails. That's the only real change to the story, but gameplay-wise, this game is basically a completely different game. The game was developed by Dimps, and instead of focusing on 6 short levels and a boss, it features 2 longer levels and a boss fight. The game is basically a third rush game in terms of style and gameplay, so it automatically feels really good to play. And with only 2 levels, it allows the game to get creative with these longer levels. And frankly, these levels feel much more enjoyable to work around and play through, and I really like the way they incorporate their whiffs into the level design, as opposed to colors of Wii, which for the most part treats them as power-ups. It also has two new whips, the Burst and Void Wisps, which replace the Frenzy, Spike, Hover, and Cube Wisps. For Void and Frenzy effectively serve the same purpose as they're both Wisps that consume everything and get bigger the more they consume, but are also slightly hard to control. And Burst allows you to charge a burst of energy and explode, causing you to go flying. One cool addition is how they changed the opening to reflect the addition of these two new Wisps and removal of the other four. These Wisps are very fun, and I like them. The game also changes the way the bosses are fought, and they play more like rush bosses, so if they are fundamentally the same, the way you play them is completely different. And this includes the final boss as well, and even the final color blaster part is different, as in the DS version you have to button mash it. The Mother Nega Wisp boss as well is also super fun and challenging, and you fight her with Super Sonic, and the music that plays when you face her is fucking great. Fought, however, when you get all seven Chaos Emeralds, which in this version you unlock by playing through these special stages, you control with the touchscreen, and they're fine. They're kind of like the Rush ones, or reminiscent to the Sonic 2 ones. Love the music for them, though. The DS version also features various challenge missions, which effectively serve as little side stories between Sonic, Tails, and their friends, who all found their way to the amusement park, and these interactions are pretty entertaining, such as the one with Knuckles and Rouge, where Knuckles is at the park because of a letter he got from Eggman, which turned out to have been written by Rouge. 
or this one with cream and cheese where Orban and Cubot mistake a child for a wisp. There's even an interaction with Blaze and Silver that references 06. I like these missions effectively feel like little mini side stories and there's tons of them with varying objectives. These side missions are great and just add even more character to this game. But with all of the changes there really are to talk about with this game, everything else is basically the same for the Wii version, but frankly, this version of the game is far superior to me. The story, while the exact same verbatim, is handled a bit better by removing a lot of those fluff cutscenes. The game feels better to control, the stages are more creative and enjoyable to play through, the bosses feel fun, the side stories had so much charm and character this version and neat interactions with the, the, the side cast, and all around the DS version is just far superior to me. And I played this version a lot, and if I play this game again, it's gonna be this one, because I actually really, really enjoy playing this version of the game. Now, that's not all. As in 2021, the game received a remastered release in the form of Sonic Colors Ultimate for the PS4, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and PC. Now, I've never played this version, so I can't speak on it myself, so I'll be passing over to my buddy, who has played Sonic Colors Ultimate. What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, Havoc, and... Christ almighty, I cannot escape this dull, boring-ass, overrated fucking game. Like, I can admit it's fine, but this game is better than all Get Out, despite everyone clamoring this, the second coming of fucking Jesus, and I don't even get to talk about the classic variation of this Snorefest. No, I'm tasked with going to town on the ultimate variation of this game. And let's jump right into the first thing that happened when ult the ultimate variation of the game dropped. Those fucking glitches. You know as an 06 fan that I gotta roast the shit out of that, because my god those glitches were horrendous. Like I'm glad I don't suffer from epilepsy because I probably would have had a fucking stroke from playing this shit if I encountered them myself. And yeah, they were patched out later, but that isn't an excuse. If the game isn't ready, don't put the game out. Like, I will always be in the camp of always remembering how a game started. Some people are all for giving these studios pats on the back after they fix an issue that shouldn't have been there to begin with. And while I'm not going to sit there and say that it's the worst game ever because of it, patch or not, forgiving developers for putting out games that aren't done will just tell them that if they do it again, we're just going to forgive them for it later. You people are the problem. But stepping away from the nightmare fueled bugs, how good is the remaster at its core? It's... fine? This is seriously the most fine of a remaster I've seen for a game in a hot minute. It changes very little overall. The cutscenes are upscaled, which is nice, but it's way too fucking bright. Like the cutscenes for the Wii version were darker than the Black Knight from Shrek, but no one said to fucking deep fry the damn game, Jesus. The controls are simple enough to adjust to if you played the original version on the Wii, like I did, but the sticks really don't feel the best. And it's because they're simulating the Wii Nunchaku stick, which didn't feel all that great in the original game either, and honestly, putting that into perspective explains why there's barely any 3D sections in the base game. They probably handle like straight ass. Like, there are times where you'll be pushing the stick in a direction, and Sonic will take five years to fully turn, which in certain stages like Asteroid Coaster can easily get you fucking killed. Next is the music, which is another part of the game that is really hit or miss. Now, you have some really great tracks that were added.
you have some tracks that are fine, but don't have the same feel of the old tracks, therefore distracting the absolute hell out of you. And then you have some tracks that are just downright awful. love to do oh yeah um look what i did oh fucking well and it just makes no sense because all the tracks in colors we were pretty good not including speak with your heart fuck that song so it boggles my mind as to how the music in ultimate got so mixed perhaps this is just a personal take i've seen mixed opinions on this soundtrack all over the place so don't just take my word for it, just go into some YouTube comments. There's some extra things you get for grabbing the Ultimate Edition, like some sparkly new gloves and auras. And honestly, that's fine. Other than that, what you see is what you receive. And while I still think that Colors DS is the better game, this $40 remaster of Sonic Colors Ultimate is honestly decent, all things considered. There wasn't a lot stopping them from adding some of the concepts that were in DS, like some of the characters from that game also appearing in the Ultimate version, as the DS variation and having Sonic's friends there didn't really mess with the flow of the story overall. Well, I, I don't even know how I can call it a story, it really isn't much of a story. Like, it is barely more of a coherent plot than Generations is, and that's saying a lot if you've actually played the game for yourself. But I guess that would probably take a little bit too much effort for them to go for. And they only charged you $40 for it. Still, it would have been a little bit nice to add some of those little things here and there from the DS version, but what can you do? Not to mention that the finicky controls and occasional unresponsiveness from the game is more tolerable in the Wii version than it is here. It's still the same boring dull narrative and gimmicky color powers. Still the limited boosting and repetitive 2D sections. Like, there are people that say that Unleashed is brain dead and apparently they did not play enough of colors because that game is as brain dead as it gets. So if you can get your hands on the DS version of this game, I would strongly advise you to go for that instead. It is leagues and bounds better than this one. Shout out to Hyvex for agreeing to cover Sonic Colors Ultimate. A link to his channel will be in the description and the pinned comment. But that's all there really is to say about this game. Sonic Colors is a game that is praised by many and held in a very high regard. But upon going back to it, the game isn't that great. The writing is poor, the gameplay is either slow and awkward or outright boring, the wisps are treated less like a gameplay mechanic and more like power-ups, and is carried by its music and final boss. But that's in regard to the Wii version, as the DS version made by Dimps is far superior in every way. Then there's the ultimate version which Havoc spoke about. Honestly, if you're gonna play this game, play the DS version. You're getting the same story either way, but if you play the DS version, you're getting far more bang for your buck and are getting a far more enjoyable game to sit through. This game is lauded very highly and regarded by many as one of the best Sonic games, but frankly, I don't think that's true. But despite all my bitching and moaning, I don't think this game is bad. Cause for all intents and purposes, it's not. <laughs> it works well, it looks nice, especially for a Wii game, everything comes together in a nice full package and it functions well, but none of that matters to me. Because when it comes to playing it, Sonic Colors is just plain boring. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm glad I could get this video at a decent time, but with this video, Sonic Blast Season 2 has officially come to a close. After the year, the season is officially over. I started the season last year and I initially planned to add so many more games to the season, but as a result of some IRL issues, plans had to be changed, and it feels weird to finally be ending this season. <laughs> but next season, we're going to be doing things a bit differently, so be prepared. Hopefully next week we start season 3. 
So be ready, bro, because more Sonic is on the way, lad. There's more Sonic to come. More Sonic videos are coming. This is this. I don't know when I'm gonna end this series. I I know what the final video, the final two videos I'm gonna do are, but I don't know how long this is gonna gonna keep going. Cause realistically, I'm kind of coming up on the end of where I'd wanna be soon. So who knows? Maybe the show will end soon. But we'll we'll get to that when we get to that. Anyways, I'm gonna stop wasting time now. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you didn't, you can tell me how much I suck as both a YouTuber and a VTuber in the comment section down below. Peace out and enjoy yourselves.